uh, today we're going to continue the regular session okay so we are doing on cell by bio, cell biology right okay so in the last class we had done about you know we had done uh, about plasma membrane okay plasma membrane so um let's see here okay about plasma membrane and all we have done so today we are going to do something about you know the transport system in plants okay how the process of transport takes place in plants which is an important topic and a lot of questions are asked based on the transport in plants clear okay <clears throat> okay so let's start this okay so now what do you understand by transport in plants um how like water and food are transported in plants yes how how, how will you if i if i just ask you what is transport in plants how do you define um i'm not sure yes any any idea like hmm yeah anything anything whatever you know um uh, you feel which is uh what you know you tell me that um like is it like xylem and phloem yes okay yes anything it can be so how xylem like transports water mm. and phloem yes and yeah so whenever we are we're talking about you know any kind of transport so we, we we have talked about like you said xylem and phloem okay so we know that xylem will transport water okay xylem transports water plus minerals phloem <clears throat> phloem transports new uh, phloem transports food Okay, phloem will transport food. All right. So, but like for example, if suppose for example, this is a cell. Okay, we have a plant cell. This is a vacuum. This is another cell. This is another vacuum. So, in between the plant cells, we have something called as plasmodesmata, right here. Okay. So, what is happening here is that whatever the constituents of the cell are, one cell to the other. It has to pass on from one cell to the other, right? Okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> okay. So now what is happening is what we are talking about is this transport in this particular cell. Okay. Transport in this particular cell. Is this clear? Yeah. Yes. Are you understanding? Right. We have talked about structures. Now we are going to talk about um, um, transport in particular cells we are talking about at cellular level. Okay, so let's try to understand. So first of all, uh, so now we, yes, last class we studied about plasma membrane, right? We studied about plasma membrane. So if, for example, this is a plasma membrane, we have studied the structure of plasma membrane in quite detail. Okay, this is the bilipid layer. All right. So now we know that every component will not be allowed to enter into the cell. It is highly selective in nature. Yes or no? It's highly selective in nature. So we cannot allow any components to enter the cell. So what we are doing right now, okay, what we are trying to understand is then how components will enter into a cell. So <clears throat> let's see here, okay? So in plasma membrane itself, plasma membrane itself we will have last class we studied okay we have the channels which is called as protein channels okay do you remember this protein channels okay or channel proteins we call it as channel channel protein channel protein okay protein channel or channel protein we call it now we know that whatever the lipid soluble component they can easily pass through correct yes they can easily pass through the plasma membrane 
what about the water soluble components they cannot pass through the you know they cannot pass through the bilipid layer so they can only use this method this is called as what channel protein okay channel protein now through channel protein okay there can be three type of transport through this channel protein there can be three type of transport we call it as first is called first is called as the uniport uniport when you can see that only one substance is passing at a time okay only one substance <clears throat> okay passes at a time passes at a time second is second is in uniport only one either in this direction either in, in whichever direction but only one uniport then next we have uh, you know is called as antiport antiport the word anti itself tells you that there are two substances there are two substances but these substances are moving in what direction they are moving in opposite they are moving in opposite direction is this clear so suppose for example if one is moving here the other one will move like this this is called as what antiport and symport the third one the third one is called as symport the third one is called as symport okay symport so in symport the molecules both the molecules are moving in in the same direction there are two substances or there are two molecules okay and both are moving in what direction in the same direction okay in the same direction this is an important uh, fact of what we call as you know how plasma membrane will help in the transport now when we talk about plasma membrane the plasma membrane we all know that it is what semi permeable in nature right it is semi permeable in nature okay semi permeable so what do you understand by the word semi permeable can you tell me only some things can go through yeah the, the, the something like you know which will not allow everything to enter yeah okay which will not allow everything to enter there'll be only few substances which will allow to enter see there are two words when we study with plasma membrane one is called as the semi permeable semi permeable semi permeable another one is selectively selectively permeable and we use both these words for plasma membrane mm -hmm. both these words are used for plasma membrane semi permeable means semi permeable means it will not allow all components to pass through okay it will allow only some components to pass through that's a general description that we give whereas when we say about selectively permeable the plasma membrane will select it will select okay i i can allow only maybe water soluble component i can allow only this component so selectively permeable so whenever sana question comes on both of this you need to first understand what they are asking are they asking you to explain on semi permeability or on the selectively permeability is this clear yeah okay next then we see some of the you know um th there are uh, some carriers which are called as electron transport electron carrier proteins okay we call them as electron carrier proteins mm -hmm. okay electron carrier proteins electron carrier or electron transport proteins electron transport proteins so electron transport proteins we see this in you know in the thylakoid membrane we see this in the thylakoid the chloroplast where the process of photosynthesis occurs inside the chloroplast if we see this is the chloroplast where the process of photosynthesis will occur it's a double membrane structure inside this there are you know stacked structures like this these are called as grana and each grana is made up of thylakoid and we are going to see this thylakoid 
so thylakoid itself okay this is also a double membrane structure this is also a double membrane structure clear double membrane structure so what is happening here is that in this double membrane structure we have a compound which is called as plastoquinone or pq okay and plastoquinone what it does it carries electron plus it is able to carry proton can you can you spell it out yes yes sure sure don't worry mm -hmm. plasto q9 yeah. okay plasto q9 so what it does so when it takes electron and proton it becomes pqh2 so that electron it passes on to the next electron carrier we are talking about photosynthesis but hydrogen or proton it will pass into the lumen of the thylakoid and itself gets converted again to pq mm -hmm. okay so it repeats the cycle now this proton will be helpful in the generation or synthesis of atp adenosine triphosphate because we know that even chloroplast carries out atp synthesis in plants okay so here the plastoquinone which is there plastoquinone which is there this is acting as an electron transport carrier it is not only carrying out electron transport but also proton transport so this type of transport is also seen it, it is it, this type of transport you will you can observe in the thylakoid in the thylakoid of the chloroplast we may not see everywhere because plastoquinone is an electron carrier this is an electron carrier and we find this in the thylakoid membrane in the chloroplast okay in the chloroplast itself then sometimes you know we have on 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 the surface of the plasma membrane on the surface of the plasma membrane when i was explaining this i told you something about okay cell receptor cell to cell recognition so what happens here that you know there sh should be some some kind of recognition which tells us okay this is this particular cell this is this particular cell so there are certain glycoproteins we call this as cell receptors or cell surface cell surface receptors receptors this is called as glycoprotein this is glycoprotein this will this which is present on the surface of the plasma membrane oligosaccharide branch chain it is it helps in the recognition of the cells recognize the cell what it is which cell it is recognize cell recognition okay cell to cell recognition sometimes also on the surface of the plasma membrane there may be certain enzymes okay there may be certain enzymes and protein can bind to specific enzymes okay protein can bind to specific enzyme so such things are found when we when hormones a hormone action is studied yeah okay then next let's see hormone or hormone action is studied okay then next let us see this okay so all right so here we saw all these type of transport then one more transport that we need to study is on the on the surface of the plasma membrane this transport is nothing but what happens it is like an it is called as an active transport we are going to study active transport in detail active transport so the word active it's self tells you that this uses atp it expend uh, you know there's an expenditure of energy energy is invested so atp transport so what happens if suppose this is a carrier protein this is a carrier protein okay and suppose any kind of substance has to enter now this substance may be in less amount here and this may be the same substance may be in more amount here so it's difficult for this substance to pass to here so with the expenditure of energy or atp the substance will be passed on to inside so that is active transport okay we are going to study more on active transport so active transport again of course it is specific okay 
again it is specific all right clear on this yes yeah okay then now let us try to understand okay now we will see some more few important things okay few, few important things let us see here okay <clears throat> so when we are talking about such transport okay when we're talking about such transport we should also talk about like for example you know some kind of um, uh, bulk transport or maybe some components are transported together okay like uh, for example sometimes like this is uh you know this is the end of our neurons okay we call this as synaptic synaptic knob this is nothing but this is our neuron neuron are the nerve cells so in this neuron or nerve cells we will have vesicles okay we will have vesicle we will have vesicle so this vesicle what happens is that this vesicle will move to this end it will fuse and whatever the components are inside this it will release this okay it will release vesicular movement vesicular movement okay then it releases this all right so this kind of movement or this kind of transport is also seen all right this kind of transport is also seen so let us see some important points related to this you know related to uh, the different type of transport system okay so the first one first one <clears throat> let us see here the process of diffusion okay process of diffusion now diffusion okay diffusion will take place it's a process of movement okay it's a process of movement of solute particles movement of what particles solute particles you understand what is solute yeah yeah can you tell me what is solute it's like um yes it can is... dissolve in a solvent yes it dissolves in the solvent yes or no yes, yes it dissolves in the solvent yes that is called as a solute particle okay so let's see here okay solute particle so when a solute particle okay movement of solute particle from a region from a region from a region of higher higher concentration to a region of lower concentration see the changes from a higher concentration to lower concentration and movement of what solute this is termed as this is termed as what this is termed as diffusion okay this is termed as diffusion so we say see diffusion this is a passive process it's a passive process it does not need energy energy is never required in diffusion so let us take an example of what we call as simple diffusion simple diffusion okay if we say simple diffusion for example we sprayed okay we sprayed a perfume in one part of the room and this perfume travels travels very far to the other part of the room so we smell the perfume so this mm -hmm. is diffusion this is diffusion in gases and in gases the diffusion is very faster the molecules travel very faster in the air okay so that's why aroma anything we get it very fast because diffusion travels very faster because diffusion is faster where it is faster in the air okay it's faster in the air next <clears throat> Let us see here. Okay, let us see here. For example, now, so diffusion in gases, I have told you. Now, let us see. Take one glass of water and put a drop of ink. You easily see that the ink dissolving in the water. That is, okay, that we can also say diffusion in liquid. Okay, diffusion in liquid. Now, diffusion in solid okay diffusion in solid so here let's see here when i talked about gases which particle moved okay diffusion which particle gas particles 
this moved ink also which moved okay the particles here moved the particles here they moved okay the particles here they moved but diffu but when we talk about solids diffusion is in solid is there but diffusion of solid is never there okay diffusion this you have to remember diffusion in solid is there but diffusion of solid diffusion in solid for example let us see take a beaker in that beaker take a beaker and in that beaker what you do is that fill it with solute okay sand particles these all are sand particles okay now what you do is that you pour a you pour water pour water what you will observe the water molecule will seep through the sand yes or no right yeah. seep through the sand so this is diffusion in solid this is diffusion in solid but okay make a small hole here make a small hole here tilt the jar when you tilt the jar what you'll find a very very small hole i mean very small tilt the jar and what you'll find is that you know all water seeping out but what happens when you tilt the jar the liquid starts to block the liquid starts you know the the the, the sand particles will not allow uh, the sand particles will not itself not go out but it will allow the liquid so this is diffusion diffusion of solid okay we we try to explain this diffusion of solid which is difficult the reason why because for example see take the same beaker take the same beaker okay take the same beaker and give a small hole if you are adding water all water will seep out if you are having gas here all gas will seep out because the reason why because uh, gases and uh, and liquids you know they allow change in their shape they do not resist change you put you put like for example let us see here you put this is a bottle okay this is a bottle here all right this is a glass okay this is a small beaker you put air here you put water air water anywhere both air both air particles and water air particles and water particles air particles and water particles air particles and water particles okay so what happens here is that see when you put keep here what happened the water will look like exactly like the bottle right yeah yes exactly look look like the glass exactly this but do the same with solid what happens you may try to you know stuff in solid sand particles here but will the sand particles even change the shape will the sand particles change the shape no no because diffusion of solid is not possible because solids resist <clears throat> solid resist change clear yeah yes solid resist change this you have to keep in mind keep this in mind clear yeah yeah <clears throat> okay so next okay so this you have to understand so simple diffusion simple diffusion never requires any atp or energy simple diffusion never requires any atp or energy okay it is a very passive process this another process which we call as 
फैसिलिटेटेड डिफ्यूजन फैसिलिटेटेड डिफ्यूजन सो फैसिलिटेटेड डिफ्यूजन Now, when we talk about facilitated diffusion, this is this is very you know observable because we are using the word here, facilitated diffusion. The facilitated diffusion, what we will have here is that we will have certain protein channels, carrier proteins or anything, or we call it as the transmembrane, transmembrane protein, transmembrane protein. Okay. so here we have the lipids okay here we have the lipids clear yeah see lipids okay transmembrane protein so what happen i have a substance here now this substance wants to enter the cell but because this substance is because the substance is water soluble and more over the substance is what soluble water soluble so it cannot enter through the lipid not possible so it will only can go through the transmembrane proteins into the cell okay so what is happening so the facilitated diffusion the transmembrane proteins are allowing the molecules to pass through now suppose in a in a in suppose this is a plasma membrane and in the entire plasma membrane we have maybe you know uh, three transmembrane proteins and suppose all three are occupied in the transport of substances so what happens if there are some more substances they cannot enter why because they have to wait for the transmembrane protein to finish up the transport then enter all right so we can say from here that facilitated diffusion can also get saturated they can also be what saturated is this point clear yeah yeah is this point clear okay they can also be saturated clear yeah. all right understood what is the what is the meaning of saturation yeah yes okay all right <clears throat> One second. Right. Okay, saturation. So I hope this is clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any doubt? No. No. Okay. Facilitated diffusion. So they can get saturated. Facilitated diffusion can get can get saturated. Okay. Now, now see here. Let's see here. For a, for example, if I'm talking about you know, uh, let's okay. Let let's see here. Okay. So I have a beaker. I have a beaker here, and beaker contains what? It contains pure water. There is pure water. Then what I add is that I add few crystals of potassium permanganate, KMnO4. Okay, Pot potassium permanganate crystals I add. So after adding the potassium permanganate crystals, what happens? The entire you know entire region it will become what? purple color it's a purple color right so it'll become purple color so uh, what i see is that i see that my entire you know water becomes purple color clear the entire full water in the beaker will become purple color now what i do i take out a small part of this water and i add in another beaker small part small part of this i add in another beaker what happens again the entire water will be turned purple each time i dilute it each time i take small small from here again you take a small section and put it again in a beaker again what happens the it will turn an entire water blue uh, purplish color the why why this has happened first of all this is diffusion in liquid okay first of all this is diffusion diffusion in liquid next question is why does this happen this happened now because let us see here in the beaker we had water molecules we have what water molecules okay water molecules keep this in mind we had what molecules water molecules okay so water molecules were they were only water only water and this had an energy which is called as potential energy so we call it as the water 
पोटेंशियल पोटेंशियल वाटर पोटेंशियल पोटेंशियल एनर्जी और वाटर पोटेंशियल आई मिक्सड पोटेशियम पर मैंगनेट वेन आई मिक्स पोटेशियम पर मैंगनेट वॉट हैपन इज दैट हियर ऑल द पोटेशियम पर मैंगनेट क्रिस्टल्स वे डिजोल्व all of them were what dissolved in the water molecules okay so when when i dissolve the permanganate uh, crystals what happened not only the water molecules but even the km no4 molecules both water and km no4 molecules they started to move okay that means they started to acquire kinetic energy and while acquiring kinetic energy they all were spread spread in the beaker huh. spread in the beaker and that's why even so what happened they spread in the beaker so because they spread in the beaker that's why each time you take small liquid from the potassium permanganate solution and put it in a you know or put it in a pure water they always show the purple color so this is what diffusion is okay this is what diffusion is with every permanganate uh, solution there is always a water okay is this clear yeah. yes this is how diffusion in solid takes place now whenever we are saying let us see whenever we are talking about plasma membrane we talk about water soluble components we talk about lipid soluble components what about water molecules what about water molecules how even this water molecules can enter through the plasma membrane how is that remotely possible that they can enter through the plasma membrane let us check on this okay how they can enter through the plasma membrane see in plasma membrane we have certain 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and eight. okay there are eight molecules like this 1 2 3 4 Five, six, seven, eight, eight molecules. Okay, and these are all attached. They form structures like this, and this is called as aquaporins. So water molecules always pass through aquaporins, which are present on the plasma membrane. Aqua. porins or simply we say porins these are channels that allow only transport of water so mitochondria okay mitochondria outer membrane of mitochondria outer membrane of chloroplast why they are freely permeable because they contain aquaporins they allow all substances to enter okay they allow all substances to enter is this clear okay yeah. aquaporins so keep this in mind okay after diffusion after diffusion gases also uh, gases diffusion i have shown you now okay let us see some one another important uh, you know um, property all right of transport that is called as osmosis osmosis is the movement of this is movement of water molecules diffusion was the movement of solute substances this is movement of water molecules from a region of higher concentration to lower concentration this is osmosis osmosis is considered as a special case special case of diffusion special case of diffusion it is a type of diffusion where water molecules will move from higher to lower but while moving okay there is always a semi semi permeable membrane associated so correctly i can define movement of water molecules from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration through a semi permeable membrane is called as diffusion is called as sorry is called as what osmosis osmosis is a very important transport which takes place in our body now let's see here osmosis okay it will take place. now uh, let me just give you example diffusion also is uh, important exchange of gases 
from the alveolar to the blood vessels in our body is through diffusion. Okay, let us study osmosis. Okay, let us study osmosis. All right, now, um, okay. Mm. All right. There are two systems. There are two systems. And this two system is connected by a plasma. We have two system. Okay, we have system A. We have system B. Now, these two systems, they are connected by a small. This is a plasma membrane. Okay, so imagine uh, this is a cell junction, and imagine this. Uh, you know, the section, entire section, to be the plasma membrane here. Okay, this is the plasma membrane. So let's see this. Okay, this is the plasma membrane. Okay, so we have these other two cells. Okay, now what happens here is that in this in this beaker A, I have pure water. I have pure water. So water potential is denoted by the symbol psi. So here, water potential, I say it, it is maximum. Maximum means we say it is zero. Zero means maximum. Mm -hmm. Okay, because only water molecules. In this, I have water plus salt. So I've dissolved water and salt. So here, the water potential is less. It is negative. Okay. And solute potential. Solute potential. Ability or ability of the uh, system to take up solute. Okay. Uh, it goes on uh, decreasing. From, you know, positive it becomes negative. That we will see. Okay. Solute potential. Solute potential means how much ability is there for the system to take up water. Now, this in this system, we not only have we not only have the water, but we also have the solute. We also have the solute. So pure water is less. So according to the rule, water molecules will move from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. Okay, till this this you know till this reaches equilibrium or till this re this becomes constant all right because here in this region in this b okay here water molecule is what less so water potential is also less water molecule is less because we have salt so here water molecule is more so here water molecules will move from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration Okay, so as water molecule moves, more water means, you know, more water enters means it can take up more solute. So depending upon how much water has entered into this system B, that much solute can enter. A time will come when this B cell can no longer take up water because it's maximum. Neither it can take up solute. Okay, that time it is called as osmotic potential. Okay, at that time, or it will, uh, it will also, what happened, it will also generate a pressure called as turgor pressure. Okay, turgor pressure, wall pressure. Because whenever this is generated, that means there is maximum water that has entered. Okay, maximum water that has entered. All right, this is osmosis. This is osmosis. Now, did you understand this, Sana? Any doubt here? No. Yes, clear? Yes. Yeah. This is clear? Yes. Now, see this. <clears throat> Let us see some other things. Okay, let us see. Yes, okay. Osmosis. 
let me tell you this okay suppose now what happens we take i take a beaker i take a beaker in this beaker what i do is that i add water plus salt so sana tell me water potential is more or less um it is more no water yes. potential is less because pure water will be less no because i added salt mm -hmm. okay water potential is less so this type of solution where water is less and we have also dissolved salt or salt is nothing but solute so this can either be sugar or salt so whenever in a system there is water and salt is dissolved this is this solution is called as hyper hypertonic solution that means in the water there is salt or sugar or any other solute dissolved so hyper hyper means more hypertonic now what i will do is that i will add okay i will add here an onion peel okay an onion peel an onion peel will have cells like this rectangular cells onion peel and then right okay and then right in the middle what we will see is we will see the cyto this we will we'll see the okay we will see the vacuole and the protoplasm everything is intact like this see you will see like this exactly like this you'll find okay now what i did was i kept the cell here after some times what i observe was shrinkage of the protoplasm the protoplasm will shrink like this see protoplasm will shrink clear protoplasm will shrink okay so what happened here here shrinkage shrinkage of proto plasm occurred shrinkage of protoplasm occurred why because there was a process called as eggs osmosis this in outside the beaker was what hypertonic that means less water more solute but inside the cell was what hypotonic more water so that's why water has a tendency to move from a region of higher concentration so inside the cell water was in higher concentration to the outside that is the lower concentration this process this is ex oise moses exois moses take the same onion peel cell shrinkage of see this protoplasm shrunk right all right yeah we can what do we observe we will observe shrinkage of protoplasm shrinkage of protoplasm is called as plasmolysis what is it called plasmolysis. plasmolysis now what do we do take the same onion peel cell take the same onion peel cell and keep it in fresh water take the same onion peel cell and keep it in fresh water what you will observe is again the protoplasm is regained okay mm -hmm. so we have this onion peel cell okay so what we observe us like this shrinkage of protoplasm okay so what we did was we took a beaker which has now only water molecule so here water will enter okay water will enter into the cell because outside is hypotonic now inside of the cell is hypertonic so what occurred ex osmosis when ex osmosis occurred observe again the cell under the microscope you will find that the protoplasm has regained 
okay this process is called as d plus mo lysis this point is clear yeah d plus mo lysis okay then another important fact that you need to know suppose this is the seed and seed needs to absorb water so when it absorbs water the water does not enter instantly inside the seed it remains outside the seed see this is water it does not just enter into the seed it will remain okay slowly it will enter so earlier it will remain here when it remains on the surface it will cause swelling of the seed that is called as imbibation imbibation okay imbibation you can take some grams okay bengal grams or chickpea beans or any any beans put it in water after some time you see that it is swollen because why water has imbibed after that water has entered first it the water stuck to its cell wall or seed coat after that the water has entered this is called as imbibation the imbibation is uh, is a result during rainy seasons sometimes you will see you know that the doors are jammed okay during rainy season the doors are jammed all right this is because the doors are jammed because there has occurred what imbibation okay so wooden doors and all they will be jammed right you can't open them that is because of imbibation sana is it clear yeah okay so what happens so can you tell me in osmosis will the water continuously enter into the cell no at which point it will stop um when the the yes tell me at which point which point it will stop um at um, which point it will stop see ya water do not continuously enter into the cell suppose for example water is entering but a time will come when what happens osmotic potential then pressure potential will tell that okay maximum water has entered into the cell so now no more water can enter yeah. this generates a pressure okay of the cytoplasm into the cell wall called as turgor pressure or of the cell wall into the cytoplasm called as wall pressure so because of wall pressure cells will swell and after it happens no more water can enter into the cell is this clear yeah yes no more water can enter into the cell okay next let us see now next okay so we're talking about cell division okay we are talking talking about cell division sorry not seven one second active transport active transport whatever transport till now whatever we observe diffusion osmosis it is always towards the concentration gradient from a region of higher concentration to region of lower concentration active transport is always against concentration against concentration gradient against concentration gradient okay against concentration gradient so anything suppose for example let us see diffusion diffusion osmosis we call it what we call it towards concentration gradient 
towards concentration gradient. That means here, no ATP required. No ATP is required. All right, towards concentration gradient. That means from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. But active transport is exactly opposite. Active transport is when the movement has to be against, I've written here, against concentration gradient. Also, when the components has to be taken to uphill. Here, diffusion and all, this is downhill towards concentration gradient, against concentration gradient, uphill. That means from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher higher concentration. So when you move something from lower to up, you're pushing it. You need energy. Same way, when molecules are taken from a region of lower concentration to higher concentration, they need energy. And that is called as what? Active transport. Okay, it occurs against the concentration gradient from a region of lower concentration to higher concentration. Is this clear? Okay, suppose sometimes like for example, let us talk about, um, okay, one minute. Okay, about the neurons. Okay, neurons that are uh, responsible for conduction of nerve impulse, neurons. In neurons, we have a channel, which is called as sodium. I'll, I'll write it here rather. It is called as sodium potassium ATPase pump. Okay, sodium, potassium, ATPs. So by the name, you can you will come to know that, okay, sodium and potassium is transferred. So let us see here. Okay. This is inside the neuron. Okay. This is outside the neuron. So outside, outside what happens? We have, okay, we are outside. One second. Outside, we have sodium ion more and we have less potassium. Here, sodium is less and potassium is more. So, movement, movement, okay, movement of sodium, where sodium is less, inside. So, Three sodium will be out. Three sodium out. For every three sodium out, okay, there will be what? Two sodium, two potassium in. Two potassium in. But what is happening? This is working against their concentration gradient. Sana, are you understanding? Yeah. See, this is what happens in our neuron. Okay, this is what happens in our neuron. Outside the neuron, the sodium is more, potassium is less. Inside the neuron, sodium is less, but potassium is more. Mm -hmm. Now, what did I say about active transport? It will work against the concentration gradient. So concentration gradient means from a region of higher to lower or lower to higher? Which one, Sana? Um, it's higher concentration gradient. Yes, against when we when we use active transport, is it against concentration gradient? So uh, active transport. So is it from higher to lower or from lower to higher? Higher to lower. No, against concentration. Oh, sorry, lower, to, lower to higher. Ah, lower to higher. In the same way, see in this diagram that I have given, inside the neuron, sodium is less, and potassium is more. Outside. Sodium is more, but potassium is less. But do you see the transport? What is happening? 
three sodium comes out three sodium and two potassium goes in so sana tell me is the sodium and potassium against the concentration gradient or towards the concentration gradient against See the arrows against against concentration gradient so will this require energy or not yes yes so so what happens is that here atp will be used so see here atp so atp energy is required okay this call as sodium potassium atp as well so whenever it is active transport always atp will be required atp again we are uh, we should understand active transport it is highly selective sana what do you understand by the word active transport is highly selective um it only let certain things in sorry it only let certain things in yes okay active transport though energy is utilized but it is highly selective okay is this clear all right so <clears throat> we have carrier proteins what i showed you just now the sodium potassium atps pump the sodium potassium atps pump is always open and there is constant exchange of components so this keeps you know our nervous system very close intact not passing the nerve impulse every time when it's not required or helps in the efficient transport or have efficient conduction of nerve impulse okay <clears throat> is this clear Yeah. so if suppose if a pump of molecule for a particular substance is not present suppose for example this is what sodium potassium atps pump right so we can transport what sodium and potassium suppose this pump was only potassium can i transport sodium here no no if i want to transport anything its pump should be present if its pump is absent i cannot transfer clear yeah. yeah yes understood or not yes yeah. so this is how transport will take place then sometimes we refer to something called as bulk transport bulk transport so let's see what do you understand by bulk transport bulk transport suppose we have here food particle okay we have here what particle food particle so we have this is the amoeba this is amoeba you know amoeba yeah yes this amoeba with a nucleus and contractile back so amoeba sees this is the food and this is solid food solid food amoeba sees this so in the next step what happens amoeba forms long extended pseudopodia long extended pseudopodia like this okay long extended pseudopodia and it engulfs the entire solid food after it engulfs the entire solid food what happens amoeba withdraws its pseudopodia okay now it has a vesicle and this vesicle contains the solid food so this vesicle will be digested so once it is digested what happened the waste component okay waste component will be fused and it will finally be eliminated out okay it will finally eliminated out so two com two things we studied the engulfing of the solid food by the amoeba this is called as phagocytosis okay after the digestion whatever the waste was there that is expelled this is called as exocytosis mm -hmm. and suppose for example instead of solid liquid food was taken then it is called as pheno 
cytosis. Yeah. Phenocytosis. Okay. Bulk transport. So, Sana, can you tell me one such cell in our body that carries out phagocytosis? Um, yes. We have an immune defense cell, right? Yeah. Yes. It is macrophage. Macrophage. All right, macrophages are phagocytic cells. Phagocytic cells of our body. Whenever they find an, any microorganism that is wandering in our body, what it will do is that the macrophage will engulf, follow zoic nutrition, engulf entire cell and destroy the cell with its lysosome. See here. Suppose there is a small bacteria and we have macrophages forming a pseudopodia like structure. See, after that they will engulf this. So mm -hmm. finally there are lysosomes. There are lysosomes. The lysosome will fuse with this and distribute to the digestive enzyme. So as a result, what happens? The microorganism get digested. Okay, they get digested. And macrophages, what they will do is that they will take the protein of this microorganism, okay, and they present it on their surface. Like this, they present it on their surface. Okay, so that other immune cells can recognize this protein and start attacking the viruses which has entered in our body. Mm -hmm. Okay? Is this point clear? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. All right, Sana. Yes. So, this is all about the cellular transport. Have you understood this? Yeah. Okay. Next. So after all these, you know, cellular transport, all these, okay, how the mechanism of transport will actually work on the plasma membrane. Now we should understand, okay, we should try to understand how a cell, uh, you know, how we know that how cells perform, we know that how cells perform the function right now, but we have to know that how is the life cycle pattern of a cell. So let us start with cell division. Okay, cell division. Sana, can you define me cell division? Um, it's the way that cells divide. Yes, the way the which what will divide? Cells. Cells divide. Yes. Do cells have um lifespan? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sana, that reminds me. See, I, I just mailed you. Uh, can you just give me the name of your book? Oh, the one that you mailed me? That's oh, the Yes, yes. Because I wanted to confirm whether it is the one or not. Yeah. Is it, it the is one? It. Yeah. That's the one, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Confirm. No problem. Because I have that. That's why I asked. Okay. All right. No problem. So, in, in, in school, you follow that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So exactly what is there you follow, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. We're going to do. So there are some stem cells and all All this we will do. But first, let me just uh, go to the basic of this, okay? All right? And then whatever is there in the last class, we are going to uh, finish up all that. Clear? Okay. So let's see. Cell division. So when the cell divides, every cell, every cell in our body has a life span okay every cell now when i say every cell in our body it can be in microorganisms bacteria it can be yeast anything so bacteria bacteria has a lifespan every bacteria divides after 16 to 20 minutes that is the lifespan. So whatever is the lifespan of the bacteria, it is within 16 to 20 minutes. 
after that the cell divides okay after that the cell will divide and form two daughter bacteria yeast will divide in 90 minutes whereas human cell will divide in 24 hours one cell every cell will form will carry out its function and will divide after every 24 hours so that we call it as a life cycle the entire life cycle of a particular you know cell is divided into various phases it's divided into various phases so let us see the different phases sana can you tell me what are the different phases um there's interphase yes then prophase hmm? metaphase there is m phase yeah. after interphase anaphase no what i'm drawing here yes see what i'm drawing mm -hmm. mm. what is this this is cell cycle this is what cell cycle so let's see here cell cycle this is the life of the cell so every life of the cell is divided into various phases this is called as the g1 phase this is g2 mm -hmm. sorry 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 not g2 this is s phase this is g2 phase okay mm -hmm. s and g2 phase and this is M phase. So whenever I talk about the cell cycle, okay, whenever I'm talking about uh, any cell cycle of a cell, the cell cycle is divided basically into two phases. Okay. So the first phase is called as interphase. The next is called as M phase. The M phase can be mitotic or it can be meiotic okay mm -hmm. interface let me see here interface okay this phase is the preparatory preparatory phase that means the cell prepares itself for division when a cell divide it needs lot of food lot of nutrient so suddenly it cannot get so the cell has to undergo a long period of phase which is called as the interphase like for human cell if 24 hours is the total division interphase is 23 hours and the m phase is only one hour so it's a long preparatory phase where the cell prepares itself where the cell will prepare its components everything now this phase is so long it's about 23 hours so the whatever the changes are taking place in this interface it was difficult to observe so scientists also called as the stationary stationary phase but we should understand that in the interface, the cells are, okay, metabolically very active, metabolically very active. Highest metabolism in the cell will be found in the interface, okay. Interface consists of G1 phase which is also called as the growth one phase then where various functions will take place s phase okay s phase also called as synthetic phase and g2 phase also called as growth two phase m phase is actually the cell division where the cell divides Okay, actually the division, the cell division, where the cell actually divide. It can be mitotic, okay, also called as equational 
division and meiotic called as reductional division we'll see about mitotic and meiotic later now let us consider here okay so let's see here starting from this phase up to this is what phase inter phase okay so let's see here g1 phase what are the changes that is taking place in g1 phase in g1 phase we will see protein synthesis okay we will have an enlarged enlarged nucleus we will also see rna synthesis we will also see what rna synthesis this is g1 phase okay s phase here dna replication or dna duplication takes place see sana for example if i have a note if i have a note with me okay and that note suppose for example i have any note maybe a question paper now if i want to suppose there are five students in my class i want to give to all five of you will i tear that and give mm -hmm. no what i will do i'll take out a copy of that right and i will distribute copy to everyone like that when a cell divides the cell does not break its dna it will double its dna it will this is one copy of dna it will make another copy of the dna mm -hmm. okay it'll make another copy of the dna and put it to the cell okay we'll take it to the cell so here dna duplication dna duplication means the amount amount of dna is doubled now see when a cell when a cell is in g1 phase it has a choice to remain in g1 phase it has a choice okay i don't want to divide i will not divide but the moment the cell enters into the s phase it has no choice the cell has to divide because s phase means the dna will be doubled and no cell can remain with a doubled dna clear no. yes no cell can remain with a double dna okay this you have to understand okay mm -hmm. next let us see okay next let us let us try to understand this okay are you understanding sana yeah any doubt mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. all right let's see here s phase towards the end of s phase towards the end of s phase we will we will find okay we will find centriol centriol duplication centriol is that structure which will form spindle fibers you know what are spindle fibers yeah yes they are found in cell cell division right mm -hmm. hmm. spindle fibers so even in uh, s phase we will also find histone protein synthesis histone is a protein which is always associated with eukaryotic dna clear yeah histone will always be present with karyotic dna okay all right now towards the g2 phase here towards the starting of the g2 phase centriol centriol duplication is completed here also the cell will be enlarged enlarged nucleus enlarged nucleus will also see 
protein synthesis occurring in the cilia. Once after this, the cell goes here. Then finally, when the cell enters here, the cell will actually divide. M phase is the phase of cell division. So at the end of M phase, at the end of M phase, what we will get is at the end of M phase, okay, at the end of M phase, we will get how many cells? We will get two cells. So out of this, one will continue division and other one will enter into another phase here, which is called as the G0 phase. So one cell will enter into the G0 phase. It will wait there. If our body requires cell, then it will divide. Otherwise, it will not divide. Mm -hmm. Clear? Okay. Right. Yeah, sorry. Yes. Okay, no problem. Okay, so the, these are the various features of cell cycle and the various stages of cell cycle. Please have a look at it, Sana, and tell me, have you understood or not? Yeah. Okay, you tell me here one thing. There are two cells at the end of cell cycle, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this two cell, will both the cell divide? Pardon? Will both the cell divide? Yeah. See, at the end, end of cell cycle, we have two cells. So you tell me, will both the cell divide? Yeah. Or will both the cell undergo cell division or one will remain in G0 phase? Oh, one will remain in the Will one will remain in what phase? In the G0 phase. G not phase. So when the body requires only then it will undergo division. Clear? Yeah. Okay. So next class, we are going to complete the cell division and a little bit of there. Uh, there are a few things which are there. You know, can uh, how cancer cells uncontrolled division. There are about stem cells. We are going to do detailed structure of cell organelles. We have already done. Okay, all the detailed structures we have already done. So we are going to do that. And most probably in the next class, we are going to finish up with this chapter. Okay.